Greetings, it's Ian from RTO here with his new toys. Oh, I'm like a toy kid in a sweet shop. Yeah, new microphone, new camera. It won't improve the service, though. <laughs> it's Saturday morning, uh, and Richard's with me again. Good morning, Richard. Good morning, Ian. How are you? And this partly sunny, partly very showery morning. Oh, yesterday was dreadful. We didn't go out at all yesterday. Not even Rocky was going to go out in that. He put his nose out, and that was it. But he had lots to say about Roger Walters. <laughs> Walters out. If you haven't watched it, at the end, he's grumbling away. Um, yeah, it's not too bad here today. It's, it's, a, it's a bit on the cooler side, but there's blue sky and a few clouds. Anyway, that's the end of the weather report. Um, today's um, video is all about live music, and what it is... We've got the songs that we both like, that we prefer them live. It could be because they're just better live or because it's a different singer singing it. That's how we've done today. Um, and I've got five honourable bubbly numbers today. I've got about three or four here. In fact, I have a list which, by mistake, I scrumpled up and threw into the bin. And I had the bin hook to get it back out because I wasn't going to write it out again. So it's difficult to read, but I think there's four. Okay, so we'll do the usual thing, Richard first, me second, and then uh, see what where this takes us. I think it'll be a bit different as well. That's going to happen all day, and I don't care, because I've got a new one coming tomorrow, today. So, yay! So that'll just keep falling down. Okay, I, I'll let you start. Okay, my number 10 is from Wings, and the live version is on Wings Over America. The studio version is on Venus and Mars. And it's the double track, Venus and Mars Stroke Rock Show. Now, you can say that's two songs, but it was actually released, the studio version as a single, as the two put together. And I think the both of the Venus and Mars are really good, but it's the rock show. The live version has got more oomph in it. And to be honest with you, the Venus and Mars album itself is not very well produced. And I just think it works so well in a live setting and is plenty of punch. And it's far better than the studio version. So Venus and Mars, Stroke Rock Show from Wings Over America. It's mine. I totally again. agree with you there. I mean, I like the songs on Venus and Mars, but they're live. They're so much punchier, aren't they? They've got that, as you say, they've got that oomph. I think you find that with a lot of live stuff in this today. It'll be the same. It's got more oomph. Well, my number 10 is from Iron Maiden. And the tracking question is uh, from the Virtual um, 9, 11, sorry, album, where Blaze Bailey was singing, and the song's called The Clansman. It's a great song. It's probably the best one that Blaze um, sang. But the version I love is the one from Rock in Rio, where Bruce is back on vocals, and it becomes this fantastic song. And Bruce's delivery is so much better. It's one of them tracks that that's why they still play. I think because Bruce sings it far better. He's got the he's got the sort of storytelling better. He's got the actions better on stage. It's just an incredible song, and that's why it's my number ten because I I love the song and I love it better now. Bruce sings it. I don't know it, but I have heard that uh, the Iron Maiden fans are split with whether they like Blaze Bailey or not. In fact, most of them don't. No, he's a great singer on his own because his studio stuff's great, but in, he just didn't fit in Iron Maiden full stop. Okay, my number nine is from Steve Harley and Cockney Rebel, and it's on their 1977 live album, Face to Face, and it's the title track of their 1975 album, The Best Years of Our Lives. Now, the song itself on the album is okay. It's an acoustic bass song, but it's a little bit boring. However, with the live version, it is totally acoustic. Uh, Steve Harley is singing and the crowd is singing back. So he's actually stopping and letting them finish off the, ver or the chorus and so forth. And it is such a really uplifting song and I really do love it. Um, I heard it first and I think this is the case with a lot of these songs. Whichever one you hear first, you tend to prefer. But whenever I heard the studio version, I just was so disappointed. It was nothing compared to the live version on Face to Face. So the song is the best years of our lives with audience participation. And it's brilliant. 
totally agree again. I can't. Um, I mean, that's a, it's a great album. I mean, one of my favourite albums, from Steve Harley and Cockney Rebel. Um, again, I think it's that crowd. It's the crowd response that makes that such a great live version. Um, my number nine is probably another band you don't know much about, and that's Nightwish. Never heard of them? No. Now, when Taja left, they brought in Annette Olsen for The Dark Passion Play. It's a great album, and there's an epic on there called The Poet and the Pendulum. It's a really good track, and I always loved it. And then Floor Jansen joined when Annette left. And on the 200, 2016 live album, The Vehicle of Spirit, they do it. And boy, is it better. Now, Annette's a great singer, but Floor's got a more operatic delivery and it just makes the track even better she, she's just and that's a good singer but boy that song it owns to floor jansen now it's just an incredible version yeah i don't know it at all no but so. but you're not you, 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 if you say, that was the case of changing the singer again has made the track even better yeah well i suppose that could happen it's there's one that you know that i prefer even though it's not on this list Whatever the singer has changed, but um, I won't mention it until the end, you know, in case you do mention it. Yeah. Well, my number seven is from Talking Heads, and the song originally came off uh, Fear of Music, but it's the version on the live album Stop Making Sense, which is actually a film, really, because the whole concert has been filmed, and the song is Life During Wartime. Now, even better is if you watch the film whenever it's been uh, played, the visuals of them on stage is absolutely brilliant. The whole band is bouncing up and down in time, the song, and David Byrne is running right around behind the drummer, right around the stage. And it's, it just uplifts that song. It's so, so good. Now, the version, don't get me wrong, on uh, Fear of Music is good as well. But the live version is absolutely brilliant. And I could say the same for quite a few of those songs. For example, Slippery People is an absolutely brilliant track as well live, and it's better than the studio version. But I'm going with Life During Wartime, and especially if you get to see it. And you can see it on YouTube, and it's about seven minutes, six, seven minutes long. And it's so entertaining, and it's my number seven. Yeah, I'm I'm talking as to me. I think they're a better live band than in the studio. They're, they're, I think they're a better band live. As, and, yeah, I have seen that. How they kept – it looks like synchronised, doesn't it, how they bounce. Yes. <laughs> and then David, how he hasn't fallen over or crashed into <laughs> something. I don't know how, if it ever happened on that tour, but that was just brilliant. It's it's the highlight of that. I've seen that, and it's the highlight of that video. The whole thing is just absolutely brilliant. Okay, my number eight is from Judas Priest. Now, back in 86, they they changed the sound. It became this synthesized thing. And there was a song on Turbo called Turbo Lover. Now, I loved it at the time, even the guitar synths. A lot of people didn't like it. But when they did the 30th anniversary Turbo Lover, they did um, what a live on it. Now, on the live version that they brought out after that album, it's still synth synthesized. But the version, although it's done on the same tour, it's got no guitar in. It's just proper heavy metal. And boy, does it sound better. It seems like KK and Glenn were so glad to ditch the synthesizer guitars and just play it how it should be. Heavy, yeah. raw, and, and Rob's vocal on that is fantastic. Uh, it was recorded in Kansas City. The video was recorded, I think, in, in Texas. But the Kansas City concerts this is so much better and that's why it's it's my number eight it's just it's just the, the best version of that song you'll ever hear so it ditched the synths basically and replaced it with hard guitar yep that's what we loved about that's what we love about judas priest it's just twin guitar raucous rock well my number seven i think i said talking heads was seven it was eight my number seven is actually the rolling stones not a lot of people will agree with me here. And the song originally appeared on Aftermath, but it's a still life version from 1981, well, it was released in 82, of Under My Thumb that I prefer to the Aftermath version of, from 1966. 
and again it's very similar to your to uh your choice it's guitar based it's not I, I don't even know what the instrument was used in 1966 it was some sort of instrument anyway but this is full blown guitar and it's the opener after the the greatest rock and band in the world the rolling stones and then and it's just pure guitar and it is brilliant and i've always loved it and i've always preferred it over the studio version now i do like the studio version but it's not the same not the same at all so under my thumb is my number seven. That just missed out on my li- even my bubbling unders. I-, I agree with you. I don't know what Brian Jones was on in 1966, but he he was he tried to add all these weird and wonderfuls in. And it's a good song, like you said. But when you got Ron and Keith playing it, yeah, oh. wow, <laughs> it's just far better. Totally agree with you on there. Okay, um, my number seven is from 1977 it's from ufo and the album lights out and it's the brilliant love to love now on lights out it's classic i love it but the version that really does it for me is actually off the great live album from strangers in the night it's the pinnacle it's the definitive it's absolutely brilliant. Michael Schenker just absolutely kills it on the live version. His guitar work is brilliant. Um, I actually, I saw them do that, not with Michael Schenker, but it's still, when they do it live, it's just some great track and the fans love it. And I, that is the best version of um, Love to Love. The best second best version I've heard of that is Europe did a version of it where Michael Schenker with them and Joey Tempest can sing it as good as Phil Mark. Very good. I, I wonder if we're going to get through this whole uh, list with, of your list with me not knowing one single song. Yeah, I mean, I know all yours. <laughs> oh, but I, I'm not a heavy metal fan. But. Well, you might not know this one, and it's my number six, and it's from Toya. And it was originally on her Sheep Farming and Barnet EP and then LP from 79 and 1980. But it's the 1980 live version from Toya, Toya, Toya of the song called Danced. That's it, Danced. Uh, It is absolutely brilliant. Now, it's a two-parter song. It opens up very sort of slow and quiet, and then it goes into a real sort of bopping track, and the guitars are flying like mad in the live version. There's a weird bit that goes on in the studio version, which is not quite as good. But the live version itself is absolutely brilliant. And it was also released as a single, the live version. Uh, didn't do anything. But um, I, it's one of my favourite Toya songs of all time. And it's just called Dance. No, I've never heard that song. But I will. Because Toya will be featured on a Ladies' Day one very in the next six months so i'm going to be listening to all toya's album so i will have a listen to that but i will listen to the live version as well okay um number six now you must have heard of this band it's acdc yeah i have a few of their albums yeah and this is the opening track on the power rage album which i have riffraff right i have the album the song that well but the version i love is the one off the live album if you want blood you've got it i think it's probably the best opening track of a concert acdc ever did it's that i wish they would open with it now even though it's not bond soon it's just an absolute killer track i mean they played a, a the first gig for ages up in um, in America, and they open with "If you want blood, you've got it," which is great as well. But Riff Raff is the one. I mean, they did it on that VH1 thing back in the eighties, and it was absolutely killer. Brian sings it. It's just it's that opening riff, mm-hmm. and Angus just flies around. The uh, it's brilliant, and I just love Riff Raff. <laughs> I, as I say, I have a few AC, I've never heard an ACDC live album now, but I've always heard that they're very good. And I've always heard that the live version of Whole Lot of Rosie is supposed to be better than the studio version as well. It's, Don't know if that's the case. Yeah, it was, it was a toss up between Whole Lot of Rosie and Riff Raff. And I kept playing them and playing them. 
And I think it's Riff Raff One because it's the opening. They open the set with it. It's just. Well, my number five was a song you'll definitely know. And I do love the original version. Don't get me wrong. But there's something about the live version that makes it a little bit more special. And it's from The Pretenders. And it's the track 2000 Miles, which was a decent enough size hit for them in 1983. But in 1985, uh, they did a stripped back acoustic version live called, from the album The Isle of You, which took me years to realize Isle of You sounds like I Love You. Boo, didn't realize that. But anyway, it's, uh, it was released as a single as well. It didn't do that great. But it's an absolutely beautiful acoustic version, and her vocals are fantastic. And very, very stripped back, very relaxed, but absolutely stunning. And it gets my number five. Right track. I, I mean, I love 2000 Miles, but I've never heard the. I'm going to. Oh, obviously, I will hear the. Uh, oh, even, oh. And it'll probably. If it sounds like it's even better. So uh, that'll be good. My number five. Is from Marillion. Okay. Now it's from the um, 1983 album script for the Justice Tear, and it's the last track, "Forgotten Sons." Great track. All the uh, all the radio and the bits of the best version is the live version on that little mini EP they did called "Real to Real," recorded at Leicester de Montfort. Atmosphere mm -hmm. is absolutely amazing. Uh, and I just think it sounds a lot better. Now, Mick Pointer drummed on the original, a good drummer, but Ian Mosley kills it on there because when they do the bit where it looks like it's a gun firing, it's far better. I mean, the live on the result of the script, it just lacks that dr the drums. There's one or two tracks from that period that Ian drums with, and this is it. The drumming is so much better, and it just adds to the track. It adds to the atmosphere. And obviously, I've seen. I never saw Marillion do Forgotten Sons with um, with Mick, but with Ian, it was always like one of the highlights of the show because the drums you could feel it here. So that's why it's my number five. It's just a killer track. Good choice. Well, my number four is from my all-time favorite artist, David Bowie, and the song originally came from the album Lodger in 1979. And it's always been one of my least favourite Bowie originals from that decade. A song is called Repetition. But he did it in an acoustic-y type way in 1996. And it's on the Changes Now Bowie album. And it is much, much better. It's still not one of my favourite tracks, but it's so much better than that rather tedious, boring version on Lodger. Now the song is about domestic abuse and it's almost like repetitive hitting, if you see what I mean. Yeah. You know, it's a good subject or it's an enlightening subject really. But the version just sounds so much better on Changes uh, Now Boy and you know it's it's made me prefer or actually appreciate the song a hell of a lot more, the live version. So uh, that gets my number four. And that album was released for Record Store Day a couple of years ago. So, Well, this is freaky. Guess what I was listening to just before I... Changes Now or Lodger? I changes, yeah, Changes wow. Now. Because I'm, I'm doing some live David Bowie very soon. So, All right. And I never liked that song. And as I say, it's boring, but I'll, I just love the live version. It's much better. Oh, God. Much I mean, better. I loved it this morning. I even turned it up. Yeah. Because <laughs> I thought it was a great version. Oh, it was a great choice. I mean, I, I would have not have heard the, but it's funny that I heard the live version this morning, and I totally agree with you. Okay. My number four is from White Snake. And the album, it's the title track off their 1979 album, Love Hunter, which is a great version. But the King of Kings version of Love Hunter is on the live album, Live in the Heart of the City. And the reason why it's a bit longer, because you've got the king of the slide guitar, Mr. Mickey Moody, doing his slide bit. I've seen Mickey Moody do that slide thing, not when he was in White Snake, but in, my, in the King Billy's back garden. 
it, here's the king of slide and you got on that you've got ian pace doing the drum beat it, it's just a it's just a fantastic dave's on fire on the vocals the crowd are going mental don't you can say that these days but that, that, that it's why love it's a it's a it's a great track but the live version just lifts it I think you find with a lot of these heavy metal uh, songs, they're better live because of the crowd participation. Yeah, especially the it's ones recorded in the 80s. Yeah. The mm -hmm. smoothies, and if you play them right, they're raw and raucous. <laughs> well, my number three is a bit of an old brainer, and I think you'll agree with me. And in fact, I know you'll agree with me. And it's a special live version of Too Much Too Young over the studio version on the LP. The live version got to number one in the charts. The studio version is much uh, slower. And the live version is just absolutely brilliant, especially then it goes into the Guns of Navarone, which is brilliant as well. But uh, yeah, a number one hit in 1980, too much, too young. Absolutely brilliant live. Not quite as good studio. Yeah, I think it was too slow, the studio version. Yeah. When you hear the studio version, you want to wind it up. Come on, get but I think there's more atmosphere. Of, there is definitely more atmosphere. And I think the vocal from Terry is much better live. He was a very good live singer. I think he was better live singer than a studio. That he's sort of, when you listen to his studio stuff, it's a bit restricted. But when he's on stage, he, he used to let go. And he's a very wow. underrated singer, but a great choice. Okay, my number three is from Motorhead. Now, this is from their 1997 and their sort of debut album because there's that thing that they'd had another one. And it's the actual song, Motorhead. Now, the studio version just lacks something. But the single they released off No Sleep Till Hammersmith is just a wall of noise. And, of course, it opens up with that, just in case. It's one of the greatest live singles that's ever been released in my book. And it's from a great album, No Sleep to Hammersmith. It's maybe a single album, but it's one of the best live albums from the 80s. That was the number one album. I remember it, actually, at number one. Yeah. Did, uh, Girl School, they recorded the song Motorhead as well, didn't they? They've or... done it as well. There's, 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 them two bands have sort of covered each other's songs. Okay, right, okay. Well, my number two is a bit of a surprise. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the studio version. Absolutely love it. But the way this guy changes it for the live version is it's almost like a different song. And it's Bob Dylan. And the song is The Times They Are A-Changing. Now, your little acoustic song, fantastic. Nobody else can do it like that. But the uh, for the Budokan album, which was released in 1979, he sort of slowed it down a bit and added a load of saxophone. And there's even a saxophone solo in there, and it is completely different. And I think it is magnificent. In fact, I love that live album because he does he does chop and change a lot of the other songs. For example, I Want You, he slows it way, way, way down. You would hardly recognize it, but it's really good. But the times they are changing, they, whenever I hear that sax solo, the hairs go up in my arms. Absolutely love it. Brilliant, brilliant version. I guess my number two. Yeah, I've got that album, and I had got it by mistake. I ordered Ian Gillen at the mm -hmm. Budicon, and the bloke didn't hear me right, and I ended up with Bob Dylan. I said, um, I didn't order this. I, I, I'll take it, but can you order me thing? And they said, yeah, our mistake. Take that, and we'll order the, the other one, and you can have it. So I ended up with that album by mistake, and I love it. It's probably my favourite Bob Dylan album ever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's really a great right. choice. And you're right, that saxophone is just, oh, it gets into the shiver, doesn't it? That was that little shiver you get. It's brilliant. Okay, my number two is a song that's on a 1972 album by Genesis. We know what it is. It's the brilliant stuff is ready. Now, I love Peter singing it. I absolutely love it. But the version on Supper's Ready, there's a lot of reasons why I prefer it. A, Tony Banks' keyword work on that is fantastic. Phil just opens up that song. 
and the story it's a lovely story but phil was a, is a better i think phil's a better storyteller than peter peter's the dramatic um but phil was always the story and it's got some lovely guitar work from steve hackett and it's the best version a lot of people will ups get upset there about that but i've also got a live version with peter singing it on that uh bootleg what was the bootleg year you know the that box set of all that live stuff but the supper's ready um from seconds out always wins and always will i am the same i well you know that i prefer the seconds out version i like both of them but i, I do veer towards the Phil Collins vocals and that there was recorded buying in the period where I really think Genesis were at their best that was recorded I think in 77 wasn't it yeah on the uh, wind and weathering tour I mean the version that I've got I've got also got Steve Hackett live and Nat Sylvan sings that yeah. as well I don't know why it's just Peter was brilliant in the studio but live he just I just don't think it worked. I don't know if it's because you would add all the costumes and all that, and it's sort of, but yeah, yeah, that's why it's my number two. Well, my number one, I think, is a bit of a no brainer as well. And it's from Bob Marley and the Whalers, and it's No Woman, No Cry, which was recorded for Natty Dread in 1974. And it again was slowed down for the Live at the Lyceum in 1975. And it was the live version that was released as a single, and it's absolutely brilliant. Now, the full live version is about seven minutes long, and the single version was edited down to about three and a half minutes. I still prefer the edited version because it's the one I'm used to. And whenever I bought the uh, Legend album, it was the single version you got on vinyl. But whenever I bought the Le Legend CD, it was the long version. But whenever you go back to hear the original version of Natty Dread, it just goes too quickly and there's no uh, feeling in it or anything. But it's an absolutely wonderful song, No Woman, No Cry, but the live version is magnificent and it gets my number one. Yeah, okay. And so after the things telling me running out of time, we'll get rid of that. Right, okay. my number one is from my beloved status quo. And the track is off the Hello album. And it's the last track, 4,500 times. Now, it's great. The version on Rock to Your Drop, <laughs> it doesn't sound right. But, of course, you, it's a no-brainer. You know which version is the best version. Recorded at the at Glasgow Apollo and the live album. It's absolutely brilliant. Now, I've seen them do that on the End of the Road tour, and it was pretty good. But what makes the one off the Quo album the best? John Coughlin. Yeah. He's shuffly drumming. That song needed that shuffle. Uh, Alan Lancaster's bass on that is just booming. Rick's on fire. That rhythm is it's. And Francis just goes off on one. On the album, I think, on Hello, it's about seven or eight, nine, seven to eight, nine minutes. I think the mm -hmm. version on that, or well, it takes up side three, doesn't it? On the yeah. album, <laughs> it's about twenty-three minutes, and it's I love it as well because it includes bits of old Quo songs, "Race with the Devils" in there. It's just, and I, uh, the you either love it or you don't. I love it. It's just, I'll put I'll be fair to listen to that version any day of the week. Well, excellent choice, excellent choice. Well, I'm going to race through my three bubbling. I'm only going to use three bubbling unders here. And the first one is Deborah by T Rex. The live version in 1977 is better than the Tyrannosaurus Rex single from 1968. It's different. I love the both of them. But the live version has got is electrified basically and it turns it into like a new wave type song. And I think it works really, really well. The next one is Slade Rock and Roll Preacher. Now, I do love the version on Till Death Do Us Part, but the version on Slate On Stage, and especially the version on the bonus single that you got from Ruby Red, is, is even better, and the crowd participation is fantastic. And the third one is The Kinks, called The Hard Way. Now, it originally came off the Schoolboys in Disgrace album, 
the version that uh, I really like is from One for the Road. And I remember seeing the Kinks. That was my very first concert, and they played that, and I can still remember it. You really bop up and down to it, and it just sounds so much better. And finally, I'll give you one more. And I know you don't like the song, but the uh, or the live version yeah. uh, of Big Love is better than the version on uh, Tango in the Night. Version of Big Love from the Rhapsody original EP from 2007, which, um, okay, it's Lindsay solo, but it's his song anyway, and that is actually the best version. So those are my bubbling honours, and you've got uh, five minutes left. Okay, yes. Right, mine, again, I've got a slide for us. Oh, good. First time you heard this was on the on the Ambrose Slade album. I know what it is. Yeah, and then and then it became a a, 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 ver, a vocal version, and it's "Know Who You Are." All right, I thought you were going to pick "Born to Be Wild." Yeah, "Know Who You Are," which was yeah. which is the version of Slade Alive, of course. Yeah, of course. I mean, I love all three versions, but I think it's the it's that live version. It's Jim Lee's bass and Don's <laughs> that really and, and Noddy just kills it. It's just the best version. Okay, my second bubbling under from nineteen seventy seven. It's some news of the world. We will rock you. Now, this I've cheated here. The studio version just has got no... It's okay. It's a great song. But the versions I like are the two versions that you get on the live killers. First, you get the rocky first, the raunchy fast version, which is an absolute killer track. And, of course, you get the proper... Which sounds has always sounded better live. I think it just didn't work in the studio as well. No, I no, I, I half agree with you. Half agree with you. Okay, my next one from 1973 and an ELO track off the on the third day. Now the best version of this song is on the night when the night the light went on in Long Beach, and it's the opening track, that instrumental daybreaker. Yeah, I agree. Richard Tandy, the keyboards on the live version. Richard Tandy steals the show. Just shows what a great keyboard is. On the studio, the studio is brilliant. Don't get me wrong, but it's his little twiddly bits that he added in on the on the live version. Of course, mix great violin in on the live version just gives it that extra oomph. My fourth one is from 1981, and it's from Ultravox, originally on the Rage of Eden album. The voice, great song, but the version that I love is off that little EP, Monument, the soundtrack. Purely for that bit at the end when all of them are drumming. All right, okay. Mm-hmm. I love that. You know, it's just it just adds to it, and it's the way it just and ends. I mean, they've done one on the uh, when they re the reunion, but it just hadn't got the same emotion as it had on that original. And my last one is some in excess from. The um, 1987 album Kick and the brilliant new sensation. But the version I love is off the 1991 Live Baby Live. The whole lot of them Kick songs are brilliant on there. I, just, I have that album actually, yeah. Yeah. And that, and that, but I've now, I've also got when they redone it, they reissued it in a different name. And it's even better on that. I mean, it's great on the Live Baby Live for the mixed it better and and i think you get the true diver- version of new sensation on the live version good choice well they were different yeah. weren't they but i know it's amazing i know practically all of yours i know but i don't like heavy metal so no, I don't you don't. <laughs> but there we go folks you get there's some good songs in there and there'll be a, there's going to be some good ones in the playlist afterwards well as ever richard it's always a pleasure doing these we have got one planned, but Richard forgot what it was. Yes. <laughs> Good idea too. Just gone. I was thinking of it last night. I'm like, oh. And then it's just 
Go on. I'll, I'll come so back. In a it. fortnight, there'll be one when I get to what the title is. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, I'll be back on Monday. Um, I'm doing the stereophonics. And I'm going to do the replacements and let it be as well. Wow. New backgrounds and all sorts. So it's going to be an exciting Monday. So everyone watch to see what the news set is. <laughs> okay, this leaves me to say to Richard, thank you very much. And it's goodbye for me. That's goodbye from him. Bye. Bye.